Hello there folks, my name is Spooks and welcome back to another episode of Box Office Chat. This is a show where I break down what happened in the top 5 domestic box office charts, see where each movie landed, and see how well each movie did. So let's get started. Number 5 is Raya and the Last Dragon, making $1.3 million this weekend, bringing its domestic total to $41 million and its worldwide total to $103 million. So Raya is still holding on strong, mainly due to the fact that the other family competition like the Cruz and Tom and Jerry have all pretty much died down, and that there's really not a lot of family movies out right now for families to go check out, except for Mitchell's vs. the Machines, but that's a Netflix release. In terms of theatrical family movies, they're all holding out till the summer, so we'll see if Raya can still maintain this sort of longevity for May, as there is a lot of competition, but for right now, this is still a very impressive hold, and something to honestly be kind of proud of, especially since that it opened much less than its previous competitors, and it's still holding on strong, so uh, once again, I have to compliment Ryan the Last Dragon for doing well at the box office, we'll see how long it lasts though, but still, props are due. Number four is a movie that definitely caught me by surprise, and that is Separation. Yes, last week I was predicting that this movie wouldn't even make it into the top five, but the fact that it did, and also make more than Raya and the Last Dragon, definitely caught me off guard. It only made $1.8 million on its opening weekend domestically, and there are no worldwide totals to speak of, but hey, making number four with little to no marketing whatsoever is still an accomplishment, right? But even for a horror movie releasing now, this number is very low compared to the other films that came out before, like Come Play, Freaky, and most recently, The Unholy, which is another horror movie that caught me by surprise. And normally, this would be the part where I'd say, well, maybe word of mouth might help at least, but seeing how as reviews and reactions from critics and audiences, to put it in lighter terms, unkind to this movie, I doubt that word of mouth will spread throughout the country and be a benefit to this movie. But again, at least it surprised me with its box office performance. Number three is Godzilla vs. Kong, which made $2.8 million this weekend, bringing its domestic total to $90 million and its worldwide total to $415 million. So the movie is so close, yet it feels so far. It is just 10 million away from the $100 million milestone domestically, and I'm still betting that it's gonna make it. Maybe not this week or next week, but hopefully by the end of the month, before the summer movie season really starts to kick in, it'll be able to become the first $100 million blockbuster since Sonic the Hedgehog. Because I feel like it's bound to happen at some point. Maybe even not on the show, but it's got to happen at least some point. Again, it's going to take a while since the summer movie season is literally about to start this week. And we'll talk about that later. But I'm still going to remain hopeful as it's been starting to see some small drops as the weeks go by. And it's still hanging on to that number three spot. So I'm going to still remain hopeful and even if it doesn't make it to 100 million, 90 million domestic during these times is still an achievement to believe, and especially 415 million worldwide is still something to be proud of. But I'm still going to remain hopeful that it will eventually be able to cross the 100 million dollar milestone very soon. Number two is Mortal Kombat, making 6.2 million this weekend adding to a domestic total of 34 million and a worldwide total of 66 million. So this movie suffered from a massive 73% drop off from last week, even for a regular movie. That is huge. It's a bigger drop off than Wonder Woman 1984, which is which normally, well maybe not normally. Well, if this was earlier in the pandemic, we could all kind of sort of buy since things weren't as safe and people weren't as vaccinated and COVID was still a massive problem earlier last year as theaters started to reopen but since more people are getting vaccinated and more theaters are opening and more movies coming out this is not promising for this movie maybe Mortal Kombat was too niche of an IP for 
casual moviegoers to head to the theater for a second or maybe their first time and maybe last week and this week is just the fans who saw it already and wanted to see it again or seeing it for the first time on the big screen i don't know but even with this huge drop off it is still doing modestly well in these times at the box office it's 10 million from passing tom and jerry and i think it will be able to pass Wonder Woman 1984, and I think it can manage 100 million worldwide, but Godzilla vs. Kong, this is simply not. So we'll see how well it will be able to do next week, if it will most likely have a lesser, bigger drop than this week, but so far, it's not looking good for this movie. And finally, let's end the video off with the number one movie of the weekend, and that is Demon Slayer, which made $6.4 million this weekend, bringing its domestic total to $34 million and its worldwide total to $469 million. So while yes, this is another movie that fell significantly with a drop-off of 70%, this one is a lot makes a lot more sense because this is, well, it's based off of an anime, so this is definitely even more niche than Mortal Kombat. And it's one of those movies based off an anime that's going to be released for a limited theatrical run, hence why most people saw it last week as opposed to this week. And compared to the last time this happened with Dragon Ball Super Broly, which released in 2019, and comparing the two, Dragon Ball fell 80% in its second weekend, and, and it ended its domestic run at $30 million, while this one fell only 70%, which is just 10% shorter, and has already made more than Dragon Ball has ever made in its entire domestic run, so that's already an achievement right there, and of course we all know how well this movie did worldwide, especially in Japan, so it's pretty much a success in it of itself. So I think it's safe to say that Demon Slayer is okay in terms of box office, at least, and I think it will keep doing good for itself despite its significant drop this weekend. Although, do not be surprised if the film leaves the charts entirely, as once again, this is a limited engagement sort of thing. So in the coming weeks, don't be a little surprised if you don't see this movie mentioned here or in in the box office charts entirely. But still, so far, so good for Demon Slayer. And those were the top five domestic box office results for this week, but we're not quite done yet as we got another week ahead of us and new movies coming out. And while there are a couple of dramas and some indie movies coming out, there is one main one set to kick off the summer movie season that we might actually have this year, Wrath of Man. So had the two movies at number one and number two opened a little better, I would start to question how this movie would stand a chance against between the two of them. But given how well they did this weekend, I can say without a doubt that this movie will be the number one movie of next week. How well it will do, I think it will do probably on par with Nobody, which released earlier this year, as they're both R-rated violent action thrillers. I've seen a ton of marketing for it, and I think this might have a little bit of an edge over Nobody, seeing how it stars Jason Statham, and he can definitely sell an action movie and it definitely seems like they're catering to the same audience male middle-aged males probably dads which is strange since this weekend is mother's day but we will see how it truly does well at the box office next week on the next episode of box office chat and that's going to do it for this episode of box office chat what did you guys think of the results were you satisfied unsatisfied comment down below and let me know if you like this video, hit the like button. If you like this channel, hit the subscribe button. Follow me on all the social media links right there. And until next time, guys, stay sharp.